It's kind of hard to believe it's now been a decade since the release of the original Hammer Watch, all the way back in 2013, an action-adventure title clearly inspired by classics such as Diablo and Gauntlet. 2018 brought us Heroes of Hammer Watch, which took a more roguelite approach, but now we have the full-on sequel here in 2023. Hammer Watch 2, but can it maintain relevance in a competitive genre all these years later? Hey, put down that cheap beer and stop getting hammered. Head on over to patreon.com slash games where you can show your support for independent developers while grabbing incredible perks like Discord access to the greatest indie gaming community there is, early and ad-free videos, and pictures of our cats. Your community is waiting. Alrighty then, as Jim Carrey once said, Hammer Watch 2, much like its predecessor, is a massive adventure best enjoyed with friends. I can't say much effort has gone into the narrative, which honestly feels a bit slapped together. You begin your journey by selecting either single or multiplayer, and it would appear that they act as separate save files, so just something to be aware of. Players are then greeted with static still in-game images, which quickly recap a bit of the original game leading into this sequel. Long story short, it's the year 983, and three different groups are set out to destroy attacking dragons. It's up to you to fend off the red dragon and save the day. The dragon is eventually toppled, a castle comes crashing down, which leads us right into the beginning of Hammer Watch 2. Time to slay more dragons, basically. And I don't mean to gloss over this narrative, but the truth is there just isn't that much here, and the characters you encounter across this 30 plus hour journey just don't offer much in the way of interesting dialogue. It's predictable, a little boring, and a bit lifeless, which is a shame because the world of Hammer Watch 2 is vast and crying out for rich lore and narrative. But Hammerwatch fans are likely here for the gameplay, not so much the plot, and there's plenty to discuss in that department. You'll begin by selecting between a variety of character classes, including Ranger, Wizard, Paladin, Rogue, and Warlock for a total of five. These classes are all pretty unique from one another and cater to a variety of playstyles, which is nice. You can also customize the look of your character with nothing too in-depth, but there are a few hairstyles to pick from, some skin tones, you know, the basics. I tested the game in both single and multiplayer for purposes of this review, and while functional, the lobby system feels a bit out of 2013 itself and could become a bit more of an issue when folks are actually playing. It works, and Silent Signs was able to find my match, but there wasn't really a great way to invite friends, and making the room private also wasn't as well implemented as it could have been. Still, having had both experiences, playing with a friend or even allowing drop-in play is a vastly superior experience as opposed to attempting to go this one solo. But just what is the game play for newcomers to this series? Well, lots of hacking and slashing, dungeon exploration, level grinding, and quest completing. The combat is quite basic, as your hero has four main actions to cycle through, including your standard attacks and some magic abilities as well. On top of that, you can equip items for easy access to healing, with enemies typically coming at you in groups similar to a Diablo title or really a lot of games in this genre. There's even some boss encounters, and those are a little bit more unpredictable, though the bosses are absolute sponges and refuse to die. One might try Try to avoid or work out some sort of strategy against the enemies, but these bastards stick to you like glue and will even follow your ass into a damn inn. It's really annoying, honestly. Hammer Watch 2 can be played with either keyboard and mouse or controller, however the controller support felt really wonky as my Xbox controller kept turning into a DualShock for some reason? This messed with the button mapping and pretty much forced my hand to go with keyboard and mouse, which isn't where I'm usually the most comfortable, but that was mostly fine. In fact, that would be my recommendation for this one. Just because of the way the menus are designed. Easy enough to hold down the left click to attack away, which is nice, and really there just isn't that much thought or strategy involved with the combat here. It's mostly a matter of being strong enough to take down your foes. Attacking isn't just for enemies, as you can also bash through certain walls to unlock new paths and secrets, with points of interaction including non-playable characters, doors, and stairways to name a few. It is worth noting that if you or one of your partners falls in combat, there is a chance to revive you, your gravestone will rise, someone can go up there, hold down the action button for a while and hope you come back to life before you yourself get killed. Just as you would expect, you'll gather tons of loot, equipment, and other items that can be equipped, sold, you know, all that usual RPG good stuff. I found the menus pretty old and clunky to be honest though. Equipping felt like a chore, not helped by a very poor map system. Players will have a built-in map which does attempt to label some key areas and a larger map that more or less felt useless to me. This leads to a lot of missed entrances, aimless 
wandering. It made Hammerwatch 2 a game that didn't always respect my time. Outside of dungeons, there are countless towns to explore where you can make new purchases as well as sleep. Sleeping can be important as Hammerwatch 2 does have a day-night cycle which affects when you can access certain events and also the weather. For newcomers, I feel like Hammerwatch 2 is going to feel, for lack of a better word, pretty old. It does not present itself as a 2023 release in its combat, its map systems, leveling system, the poor dialogue, and often dizzying array of side quests which aren't all that satisfying to take on. While it's nice that players can unlock better equipment labeled Adept, Expert, or Master as they grow stronger, boy is it a grind. And I imagine a lot of action RPG fans out there are going to appreciate that grind. Totally cool. For me, the core gameplay loop just wasn't compelling enough to continue down that path. But that's just me. Hammerwatch 2 does have quite a few game options. You can change control bindings, though as I mentioned, I did experience some control pad jank. You can adjust the aim snap, floating text, all sorts of stuff. There's also a surprising amount of graphical options, though regardless, Hammerwatch 2 won't win any awards in the visual department. The pixel art is decent, but much like the rest of the game, still feels stuck behind by about a decade. Generic caves, enemies, villages, there's just nothing new or exciting here. The load screens are so bland even, and there's just a lot of uninteresting dialogue and dialogue boxes, it all just kinda looks meh. That said, Hammerwatch 2 does feature a nice orchestrated soundtrack that I quite enjoyed. Whether you're exploring a dungeon or the overworld, the music sets a nice mood that fits the game well. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but enjoyable enough. The rest of the sound design does a pretty good job of fitting the retro vibe and serves the purpose well. On the PC side of things, players can also look forward to mods, including the ability to create worlds, which is always nice. However, I did hit a few bugs, including the controller, which I mentioned earlier, but also, my music did drop out a few times. Nothing major bug-wise, but I'm sure a few patches will be able to iron this all out, hopefully anyways. As you've now heard, I had my issues with Hammerwatch 2, and while it feels a bit past its prime, the game does still offer some decent fun with friends. I don't so much recommend taking it on solo, I just found that extremely boring after a while, but it's hard to deny there is some value in the massive world, the many secrets, and level grinding if that's your thing. This one won't likely end up on too many Game of the Year lists or anything like that, but fans of the series should find some decent tasting comfort food. Thank you.